Go ahead and open your Bibles to Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9, we'll be looking at verses 38 through the end of the chapter. Again, with a poem that I came across, though, it's on the screen for you. It says, Isn't it strange that princes and kings and clowns that caper and sawdust rings and common folk like you and me are the builders of eternity? To each is given a bag of tools, a shapeless mass, and a book of rules. And each must make, ere time is flown, a stumbling block or a stepping stone. We're talking about stumbling blocks today in this sermon, in this text. Stumbling blocks are, it's been, you see in the introduction, in the outline, in the handout, Slapstick comedians have used stumbling blocks to get a, a laugh out of someone, and we, we find ourselves doing that. If I were to trip and fall up here, the first thing I'd be concerned about is who saw it, because you're going to laugh about it. And after you, well, good friends laugh and then find out if you're hurt. But nevertheless, the idea is true. We've seen that many times: misfortune and tripping and stumbling. But spiritual stumbling blocks, spiritual stumbling and falling, is never looked at in a humorous way by our Lord. It's a serious business. When we're talking about stumbling and falling in sin. The Lord is not happy with that, especially if we're the ones that are causing them to stumble. If we're the ones that are in the way, we need to be building up those stepping stones, not stumbling blocks to one another. And so in this text, Jesus had to correct his disciples on this matter because they were, they were causing problems that didn't need to be. They were seeing things in the way that they shouldn't. They were looking physically more so than spiritually. They didn't see what Jesus saw. And we're going to talk about that and see how that they were laying stumbling blocks and how he had to correct them and how we would do well to listen today as well. So the first thing I want you to consider from this text is don't be a stumbling block against anyone's true religion. Against anyone's true religion. Look at verse 38. It says, And John answered, saying, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name. He followed not us. We forbade him because he followed not us. Now, I want you to stop and think about who just said that. That was John. You know, the beloved disciple, the one who wrote so much about love. In his gospel account, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. But here he was saying, we saw these people. We saw them casting out devils, and they did so. We, we, re we reprimanded them. We told them, you stop that, because they weren't followers of us. They weren't part of our clique, our crew. See, the problem is the disciples couldn't get past the faces. All they saw were, these, these are not our people. I haven't seen this guy before, and he's casting out. But I want you to think about what he said again in those verses. Look at verse 39. Jesus, forbid him not. For there is no man which shall do a miracle in my name that can lightly speak evil of me. For he that is not against us is on our part. You see, Jesus is having to remind them, hey, he can't cast out a devil unless I allow him to do that. This is the power of God behind what he did. Don't forbid him. They couldn't get past the faces, though. I, haven't, I don't recognize this person. He wasn't one of our group, so therefore I corrected him. But Jesus had to correct John and the other disciples as well. He reminded them of the cost. There in verse 39, they, could, they couldn't do this without Jesus, but he reminded them of the cost. Verse 42, and whosoever shall, be a, shall offend one of these little ones, notice that, offend, causing them to stumble, causing them to fall. Whosoever shall offend one of these little ones that believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he were cast into the sea. Now, you you put yourself in John's shoes there. So, oh wait a minute, I was just trying to, I was, I was just trying to keep your religion pure. I was just trying to do what's right. He says, You're causing a stumbling block here. And if you cause one of mine to stumble and fall, this is what is better for you. A millstone hung about your neck and cast into the sea. Verse 41 says, For whosoever shall give you a cup of water to drink in my name, because ye belong to Christ, verily I say unto you, ye shall not lose it. That's that stepping stone concept. 
that's that being there to help one another. Someone's trying to do what's right. Now, we see a little bit differently today. Clearly, we're not seeing people casting out devils today. That's not what's taking place. The prophet said that he would cause the unclean spirits to pass out of the land, and that has taken place. Times of miracles have come to an end. We don't need those anymore. We have the Word of God. We have the completed Word of God. That which is perfect has come. That which is apart now is done away. First Corinthians chapter 13. The better way, of course, today is love. Better than those miracles that they were seeking in Corinth. And so the prophecies have failed. The tongues they have ceased because that which is perfect is come. And But Jesus is still teaching a principle for us today as well in this context. There are a lot of religious people in our world, in our circle, in this county, in this city. There are a lot of religious people. Now, he's not saying don't correct those who are not doing what is right. That's not the point. But he says try to find that common ground to help them to see the truth. And the situation here is more so not denominations versus the Lord's church. This would be a conflict of, of congregations of the Lord's people. So we're going to reprimand that other congregation of the Lord's people because they're not part of us. They're not like us. If they're doing what God has them to do, they're part of the family, as we just sang. Sometimes we laugh together. Sometimes we cry. Sometimes we share together heartaches and sighs. Sometimes we dream together of how it will be when only East Main gets to heaven and the rest we'll, we'll see. Is that the way we view it? That's, that's, that's wrong. That's a stumbling block. And we're getting in the way of true religion. You know, there is such a thing as in untrue religion or impure religion because there's such a thing as pure religion. James 1 teaches us that very clearly. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and the widows and keep oneself unspotted from the world. Keep worldliness out. Keep it as far away from us as possible. But make sure you're not a stumbling block to another brother or sister's true religion. Now, I'm not talking about some made-up man-made religion. We're talking about the truth. And again, Jesus emphasized that. He that is not with us is against us. He that is not with me is against me. He that is, not, he that is doing these things in our presence with my power behind it. You can't reprimand that, reprimand that. Verse 40 says, For he that is not against us is on our part. Now, before I go too much further with this, I need to emphasize something else. Yes, Jesus was harsh in his reprimand toward John. When he told him, yes, this was a close friend of his, not some wayward, this was a close friend of his, one of the inner circle of his, if you will. And he says, it's better off for you, John, that a millstone were hung around your neck, John, and you, John, cast into the sea, if you, John, lay a stumbling block before these little men. But he gives him encouragement. How do we see that? Look at verse 40 once more, slowly. For he that is not against us, us would be who? Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit? Well, that's definitely implied there too. Definitely, I, I don't take that away. But more so specifically in the primary context, he's tying John to him, isn't he? They that, what is it again? He that is not against you and me, John. He that is not against you, me, Peter, James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Thomas, Matthew, James, Daddy, Simon, Jesus, is Peter. He's on our part. He's part of us. He includes him in that group. But just make sure that we're building stepping stones, not stumbling blocks, especially for someone's true religion. Number next, don't be a stumbling block against our own destination. Against our own destination. So Jesus warned against these personal stumbling blocks. Personal stumbling blocks. Look at verse 43. There's a stumbling block personally in what we do. Verse 43 says, and if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed and having two hands go into hell into the fire that never shall be quenched. That's personal. What I do, what you do, if your hand, not if your brother's hand offends you. No, if your hand offends you, it's better to cut it off. Now, he's not talking about, we've heard, you've heard preachers say this many times, I'm sure, he's not talking about self-mutilation, but if it were important to us, if we had to do that, if my physical hand were getting in the way of my soul, it's better to lose it. If it's that serious, what is he talking about more so? The things that you do with your hands. It's the things that you do with your hands. Hands represent strength. Hands represent ability. 
You've heard jokes about this, I'm sure, about if animals could think and process, how many of them would wish they had posable thumbs like we do? Things that you can do just with having that one little extra digit. Hands, ability. But the things that you do could lead you to an eternity in hell. That's what he said, your destination. If it's a stumbling block, the things that you're doing is a stumbling block keeping you out of heaven, get rid of it. Personal. Personal stumbling blocks. But he also talked about where you go. Verse 45. He says, and if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter, halt into life than having two feet to be cast into hell where the fire never shall be quenched. Verse 44, where the worm dies not. There comes a time when the physical decay basically dies. It's gone its limit. But this destruction, this death that we're talking about in eternity never comes to end. That's how serious it is. These stumbling blocks we're talking about these stumbling blocks that may be in the way, where you go could be a stumbling block to your faith. Put yourself, we remember when Jesus was teaching his disciples how to pray, he mentioned, lead us not into temptation. It's kind of silly to pray a prayer, lead me not into temptation when I'm going to allow my feet to take me right there in the midst of it in the first place. There are certain places that a child of God just does not belong. It's a stumbling block. And again, those stumbling blocks lead to a destruction that never ends. The fire will never be quenched. 46, where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. Jesus is serious about this. God is very serious about the end result. So what we do, where we go, also, he didn't stop. He said, what you see could be a stumbling block to your faith, a stumbling block to your eternal destination. Verse 47. And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. Personal. Personal stumbling. It kind of reminds me of a song that we sometimes used to sing when we were little. Oh, be careful, little eye, what you see. Oh, be careful, little feet, where you go. Oh, be careful, little hands, what you do. That's a biblical song. You know, some of those songs just really aren't that biblical. There's just really not much to them. This one's very biblical. It's a psalm hymn, a spiritual song. And he's warning us, don't allow those stumbling blocks to trip you up. These are yours. You remember in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, he talks about laying, or chapter 1, Chapter 12, verse 1, he talks about laying aside every sin and the weight that easily besets you. You know where your weaknesses are. You know what gets to you. If you do, you stay away from those things that would help you trip up and fall into that sin. Temptation itself, brothers and sisters, we know that and you've heard it preached many times. Temptation is not the sin. Unless unless I'm embracing that temptation and putting myself into the stumbling block situation. That's not what good, strong Christianity does. True, good, strong Christianity doesn't see how close it can get to sin. we got to quit believing that lie. That's the lie of Satan. He's good. Wade and I were talking in between the class and this service. We were talking about how good Satan is at distracting. Keeping your focus up here as you're laying that stumbling block down there, you don't see it coming. We trip up and we fall. Are we going to trip on those stumbling blocks or are we going to climb over them to the top? That's the question you have to answer for yourself and I have to answer for mine. Don't, get, don't let your destination be altered by those stumbling blocks. Number next, don't be a stumbling block with our influence. The power of influence. It's a great power. It's a great responsibility. Once we pass, our influence is preserved. Think about that. You're, you are writing your script for influence right now. But when we pass from this life, when we draw our last breath in this time side of eternity, your influence is forever more seen. We're going to remember that. Verses 48 and 49. Again, where the worm dieth not, the fire is not quenched. For everyone shall be salted with fire. 
every sacrifice shall be salt to consume. That influencing agent, salt, I like it myself. I don't know about you. I can fish. I just can't imagine a world without salt. I hope and pray that I never have that blood pressure problem where the doctor says you can't have salt. Thankfully, I'm cruising very well with blood pressure right now, so salt and I like this. But I want to be salt as well. We need to be salting the earth that is around us, seasoning and flavoring the earth that is around us for God. For God. Not to make a name for yourself make a name for God. You are the salt of the earth. The salt's lost its flavor. It's good for nothing to be cast out and trodden under for the men. Jesus would say that in the Sermon on the Mount. Everyone individually shall be salted with fire. Tested. Tried. That refining concept that we see over and over again in the scriptures, we understand in our world today even refineries, they, they melt down the precious metal and the things that are they're not savory, the things that are not good, they rise to the top and they're scraped away. Then you have the pure, the value. Choosing, choosing not to remove stumbling blocks influences others to do the very same thing. It influences them to follow suit and to do what they see you do. Romans chapter 14, verse 7, no man lives to himself, no man dies to himself. You're having an impact and an influence on someone. Be careful what you teach. You make sure when you're teaching someone about your influence that you're teaching them to draw closer to God, not to you, not to some foreign doctrine that makes them feel good, but feel good being false. That's a stumbling block that Jesus says deserves a millstone hung about your neck. He wants all men to be saved, to come to the knowledge of the truth. The truth, Jesus said, is what sets us free, not a new characteristics and not just all the fun and glitz and glitter of glamour of this world but the gospel of Jesus Christ the truth of God's word we must be salt and we must seek peace with one another look at verse 50 we already read verse 49 50 says salt is good but if the salt have lost its saltiness wherewith shall it shall we ye season it have salt in yourselves and have peace one with another have salt in you I want my family to, to be faithful Christians. I want them to, to make an impact. Pray for Josh. This is about to start a new work. He's going to be working with a congregation in Arkansas. And I pray that he has great success there in bringing glory to God. I pray for Alex and the work that he's doing with our community. I pray regularly for each other. I want this church to be what God wants it to be. I want people to grow closer to God. I want to grow closer to God. But I can't make Alex, I can't make Josh, I can't make anyone here have that salt in themselves. That's a choice they have to make for themselves. Just like I have to make it for mine. You salt yourself, he says. You make sure your influence is what it should be. Now, I know we're going to have hard times, difficulties, and sometimes we're not going to lay the proper example. For someone we may be having a bad day and I hope and pray that none of you judge me on one of my bad days and I'll try not to do that for you either but the majority of our lives needs to be one that is assaulting and influencing for the cause of Christ influencing for good and so we think about Jesus reprimanding his disciples he did say harsh words to them to shake them up and to remind them this is a bad way of thinking this is a bad way of living. And you need to remove all of those hindrances out of your life and make sure you're not being a hindrance to those around, especially my children. We know from Galatians chapter 6 and verse 10 that we're told as we have opportunity, we're to do good to all, especially they of the household of God. That's being those stepping stones. Building those stepping stones, not stumbling blocks. God has as it were, built a stairway for us, a stairway for life. What do we mean by a stairway for life? It's something that you've heard many times. I know this congregation, you've heard it many times. I, I'm going to use it at the end of every Sunday. I, I do that. Some say, well, you don't have to do that. That's right. I know I don't have to do that. But I don't know who out there may be busy that hasn't heard this. And this is not my plan. It's God's. 
is that stairway to an eternal life. Hearing the word of God and believing Jesus is the Son of God, Romans 10, 17, John 8, 24. Repenting, Luke 13, 3 and 5, Acts 17, verse 30. Confessing that Jesus is the Christ, Romans 10, verse 10, 1 John 4, verse 15. Being baptized for the remission of your sins, Acts 2, verse 38, 1 Peter 3, 21. The light figure where I do baptism does also now save us. What are these? These are stepping stones into the kingdom of God. Stepping stones that bring us closer, each step bringing us closer, every one of them important for entrance into the kingdom of God. We're baptized into Christ, where if forgiveness of sins is found, where all spiritual blessings are found, Ephesians 1, verse 3. But then we're going forward with living faithfully, continuing to walk, continuing to lay those stepping stones toward heaven, toward life. Revelation 2 and verse 10, be faithful unto death. Paul would say at the close of his life, I have fought a good fight, finished the course, kept the faith. The result is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me in that day, and not me only, but all them. Love is good. So I'm asking myself, am I laying a stepping stone? Am I helping others to maintain those steps that we just talked about? Or am I just going around throwing a bunch of stumbling blocks? What about you? His plan is simple. His goal is obvious. Life with him for all eternity. But if you choose this world, and you choose to help others choose this world, it's an eternity of suffering. I don't want that. I don't want that for you. So let's make sure that we're building those stumbling blocks for Satan, not for God. That we're building those stumbling blocks for the world to trip over themselves and fall into Christ where they can have the stepping stones for life. What do you need to do with this invitation? We stand as we sing. I know the Lord.